Hi guys, so it seems no good deed goes unpunished. Remember the so-called Red Wall, the traditional Labour seats that switched to the Tories back in 2019 to help deliver Boris Johnson an 80-seat majority at the time. The ones who voted for Johnson because they were either sick of Brexit or were turned off by Jeremy Corbyn. Well, in 2020, Boris Johnson rolled out a new slogan to win people over. It was levelling up. The promise to spend billions of pounds lifting areas like the Red Wall out of poverty and making them prosperous. The way he was going to deliver this was by pumping in money, creating jobs and unleashing the benefits of Brexit. Well, we all know those benefits were lies, but it goes even further. It seems that money that originally had flowed into those deprived areas when Britain was a member of the European Union was to be matched by the Tory government. However, the fund to distribute this cash has yet to be set up. Britain has already left the EU, but deprived areas aren't seeing the plans, let alone the cash, for levelling up. The Red Wall and other deprived areas in England are set to lose up to £1 billion in development funding this year alone as a result of Brexit. Another Boris Johnson promise that has turned into a lie. But wait, there's something on the horizon. Instead of £1 billion for England, there will be £220 million instead. However, that £220 million is to be for all of the UK, not just England. I've covered this in a similar story when it came to Wales, and the Tory lies are now being extended, it seems, to England too. £220 million will be made available. But the problem also is this. We are into the eighth month of this year. None of this money has been sent from the Treasury. And there isn't any sign of when it will actually arrive. The north of England and the Midlands used to receive up to £500 million from EU structural funds per year. Now they'll have to share less than half of that with Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. I remember the interviews with people in the Red Wall seats after the election in 2019. They voted for Boris because he spoke to them on their level. I wonder how they feel now that they have less money made available to them even though the Prime Minister promised that he would match it. But to make matters even worse, it seems that the cash will not be distributed according to need, as it used to be when it was arriving from Brussels. No, the Tory government will decide which areas get the money. Now think about it for a moment. Do you see Labour backing constituencies or Tory backing constituencies getting the little amount of cash that's available? It seems to me that Boris Johnson's administration will use the money to prop up their MPs who are at risk of losing their seat at the next election. So most of the money will be going to the Red Wall. Well, no. To make matters even worse than that, parts of the south of England have now been labelled priority areas. This means that they will get some cash too. These areas are not deprived, but they do have a Tory MP there. In 2018, English regions received... £1.12 billion from Europe. Following Brexit, it looks like about a billion being lost. Like I have explained in the other video, Wales is set to lose out massively. However, England is going to be seriously worse off too. The Midlands, followed by Yorkshire, then Cornwall, the North West and finally the North East, will see cuts ranging from £80 to £190 million. The Labour Party attacked the cuts as a mockery of the promise to reduce the gap between the richest and poorest in society, while a group representing businesses in the north of England said that levelling up now means nothing. Sadly, areas that were expected to be moved into the deprived status and would have received EU funding will now see nothing, those being Teesside Valley, Durham and South Yorkshire. These are areas that are currently not yet deprived but Brexit is doing its damnness to make sure that they are. It was just last month when Boris Johnson delivered a speech where he said that the poorest parts of England would benefit from levelling up. However, he admitted it himself that his plan lacked detail. Steve Reid, Labour's Shadow Community Secretary, attacked the policy saying that it was not only failing to fulfil a promise to match the money lost from Europe, but it was also making regions compete against each other in a twisted type of bidding war for funding. In the end, it will likely prioritise rich areas over poorer ones. Following the Great Recession over 14 years ago, the Tories came to power and implemented a deep-cutting austerity plan. 
the poorer parts of England lost almost all of their economic development funding from central government. As we got closer to the Brexit referendum, there were fears that EU money itself would not be matched by Whitehall. This, of course, was dismissed as part of Project Fear. Well, it, like many other things, became Project Reality. In 2018, the UK as a whole received $1.73 billion for funding into research and development and business parks. But along with this money flowed in a massive amount of private funding too. This is likely to dry up also. As I've said before, the response from the Brexiteer government is the new UK-wide Shared Prosperity Fund. This is designed to replace the lost EU funding. No plans have been put in place to how it will operate, and it is not expected to start until sometime mid-2022. The government has promised to fund it to an average level of £1.5 billion, but so far only £220 million has been made available. Devolved governments fear a power grab by the Tories, as it seems that it will not be them distributing the cash, but ministers in Westminster. This is likely to cool relations between the SNP government in Scotland and the Tories in London, if it wasn't frosty enough. So far this year, 11 million will be earmarked for community renewal in Northern Ireland. Another 14 million for England will be shared between 100 priority areas. Remember those. So, it looks like the Brexiteers within the Conservative Party are on to a bit of a winner here. By convincing the public that the EU was wasteful and that EU money didn't really help Britain, they got the recipients of that cash, in many cases, to vote to end this funding. To literally vote against their own interests. Those areas that were deprived and received EU funding because they were deprived will receive nothing. Unless there's a Tory MP in the area and then they might get something. But even if they do, it will be likely one-tenth of what they received before. When will the voters wake up and realise they have been lied to? That they were conned and that the people who led them on a merry dance are preparing to call an election and do it all once again? Brexit was never about helping the poor or the working class. But you had privately educated toffs like Jacob Rees-Mogg, Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage convinced the people that Brexit was all about looking after the little man and woman. Now that EU funding for things like restoring facilities for the community or helping young people find employment is gone, does anyone truly believe that the Tories will level up? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons you ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?